These listing agents are frustrated. They're worried and they're scared. They don't want to say anything to their seller because they're afraid to be fired. So guess what? They'll be glad to say that you said it because then they're just the messenger. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Level Up Podcast with myself, Greg Harrelson. This is where I focus on taking you from agent to entrepreneur. As you know, I have a passion for developing agents. And on today's episode, I'm going to share another quick strategy on how you can increase your production. I'm going to be real, so you be ready. Let's level up. Let me go through something that I have on my mind, and that is the negotiation process. I think there is an opportunity for you all that is working with the buyers to kind of understand that things are changing a little bit when it comes to the conversation between the real estate agent and their seller. Now, when I communicate today, what I'm going to communicate, some of you are going to probably say, oh, Greg, no, they're still really being hard in the negotiation. I understand that. But hear what I just said. I can assure you two things. Number one, listing agents are extremely frustrated right now because they used to put the property on the market and it was sold overnight without any effort. That's the reality of the market we've been in for the last couple of years. The listing agent had it made. Take a listing. It sells. Don't even need to talk to the seller much. Don't need to give the seller any updates. Don't need to actually, you know, explain to the seller why the property's sitting on the market because it didn't exist. None of that existed for the last couple of years. I can assure you. Oh, how do I know this, by the way? Well, number one, I'm a listing agent. That's why. Number two, I also coach all the listing agents. I understand what they're dealing with right now. The second thing, though, is that they're worried. They're worried that if they explain why the market is actually taking more, why their property is sitting on the market longer, if they explain that, they're worried that they're going to get terminated by by the seller. So the agent's frustrated because it's not selling. And they're worried that if they go to the seller and say, hey, look, maybe we need to adjust your price or maybe we need to maybe we do need to do that, uh, that renovation when they go now, because when they listed the property. They listed it and saying, man, this is great. There's no competition. There's no inventory. Buyer offers are till still coming in strong. No, we can get it sold. That's their listing presentation. Now it's sitting on the market. And so the days on the market doesn't match what conversations they were having when they listed the property. And it's not because the agent probably did anything wrong. It's because the market has softened a little bit. Now the listing agents are worried. Well, what do I say? Well, how do I tell them to lower the price or, you know, I I think they're going to have to clean it up or I think they're going to have to do this. But I didn't say that before. How do I go back and say it now? They're worried of getting fired. Now, I, I, I will. Uh, I, I will also let you know that a seller right now. One thing that's frustrating an agent. As the the agent knows that the markets can go up and down. They can get hot. They can be soft. But when a seller feels like the market's up, nobody can tell them it's softening. Nobody can tell. They know it all. They are the know-it-alls. And the reason why they know it all and they know it all forever is because they're attached to a certain price and they don't want to let go. And the first thing they're going to do is say, it's the agent's fault, it's the agent's fault, it's the agent's fault. Well, no, two other ones sold at a little bit lower price and they were in just as good a condition. One's on the market right now, better condition than yours, asking the same price and it's not selling either. Yeah, but what are you doing to market the property? That's what the immediate response is to ignore everything that the listing agent just said and say, well, what are you doing to market the property? And then the agent says, uh, 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 because they haven't had to market a property for three years. 
So what I'm having to do with the listen agents is I'm having to share with them what kind of conversations do we need to have about marketing property. So if the property doesn't sell, they can never question whether or not you're doing something. But that's me and the listing agent's going to have that conversation. What I want you to understand is that listing agents are frustrated. Now, you may say, well, you're frustrated. Well, one thing you're not frustrated with right now is five offers, $20,000, $40,000, and $50,000 over full price. That's one frustration for you buyer's agents that does not exist anymore. And if anybody says, well, Greg, I had one that had multiple offers, yes. The key thing is I had one. Before it was I had all. You were frustrated because you were conflicted. Do I have my buyer? Do I have my buyer make an offer and waive the home inspection contingency? Do I have them do an appraisal gap? Remember how you were conflicted thinking there's no way I'd do that. How can I tell somebody to do that? But if I don't tell them to do that, they're never going to get a property. And if they don't get a property, that's failing them more than if they actually buy a property and they find out the home inspection is going to cost them because they didn't get it's going to cost them a thousand. If they lose a thousand because of waiving the home inspection, be better than not getting a property and continuing to pay rent. That's how we justified it. That was a frustration. That one's gone. Now, I'm not saying that the buyer's agents do not have frustrations. My experience for the last 25 years is every real estate agent, whether you work with a buyer or seller, has a frustration because as human beings, for some reason, we just like to be frustrated. It fuels us. We just don't, we, 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 we can't allow it to be too easy. We can't allow it to be good. We always have to find something wrong, frustrate, have an excuse about. But I can say this, that frustrations are shifting. Shifting a little bit right now. So when this occurs, you can use this to your advantage. That is, doesn't mean to take advantage of somebody, but there's something that you can do to give yourself an advantage. And that's what I want to talk about now. <clears throat> I will say this. In our markets, inventory is higher today than it has been in 12 months. We're at a high for inventory over the last 12 months. Now, again, well, Greg, you don't understand. There's still not that much. It's the highest it's been in 12 months. So you see what direction it's going in. There is no real estate market that goes from like no inventory to too much inventory like that. It's always a progression. So I'm always monitoring it. We're seeing, well, there was, Three, uh, 30 days of inventory on the market, then 60 days, then 90 days. Now I'm looking and it's the highest it's been in 12 months. Is that still low? Yes, it's still low. Compared to the highest that I've seen it. But it's actually getting close to a neutral market. It's actually getting close to a neutral market. So inventory can still be low. And it be a neutral market, meaning not a buyer's market and not a seller's market. And that is when the buyers are slowing down their purchasing. So if supply's down and demand's down, then you don't have to have high supply for it to be a buyer's market. You have to have more supply. As a matter of fact, what we believe a buyer, a, a neutral market is is four to six months of inventory. We're not quite at four months of inventory, but we are surely not at one month of inventory and we're over two months of inventory. And in some cases, we're around three months of inventory. So we're getting closer to a neutral market. We're much more close to a neutral market than we are a seller's market. So for you all, when you're the when it's a seller's market, that's when you feel the most frustration because you feel like your buyer's getting bullied by the seller. Now, we're at an interesting place though right now. Because I started this conversation about the seller agents, listing agents are frustrated, then they're not having the conversations they need to have with their sellers because they're worried about getting fired. They're worried about what questions they're going to be asked. So they're actually not having 
the important conversations, which is lower your price, cut the grass, replace the carpet. They're not having those conversations. Remember I said they're worried, they're frustrated, they're scared. So here you are having to negotiate and where you and your buyer is thinking that you're offering a very fair price, but you're presenting it to a listing agent knowing the market is not as good as it was and the listing agent is getting nowhere with their seller. Like it's almost like they're negotiating like it's two years ago. But there's nothing in the market data that indicates it's two years ago. So I believe this is where real estate agents have such a huge influence on the transaction because a good real estate agent will be able to communicate with their seller and give them the reality of where the market is while remaining in rapport and still maintaining trust. And when that happens, the seller will listen and we'll put deals together. So what am I suggesting that you do? And I know some of you already do this. And if you do it, I want, I want to ask you to ask yourself, how can you do it better? And if you're not doing what I'm suggesting, I'm asking you to start doing what I'm suggesting and watch you'll put more deals together. Okay? And that is this. You must explain why you're offering what you're offering. If you've got a property that's listed for $300,000 and you're offering $290,000, I want you to explain why you offered $290,000. And the explanation cannot be, oh, we just think that's what it's worth. The explanation cannot be, well, we had to start somewhere. Those words should never come out of your mouth to a listing agent. If you think that's what it's worth, I want to ask you this question. Why do you think it's worth that? Now, I'm not asking you to prove to me, listing agent, that you are accurate, that you're right. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying buy, you when you're working with a buyer and you present an offer, you need to prove that you know what you're talking about. That's not what I'm saying. I'm assuming you know what you're talking about. And I'm also assuming that when you and your buyer make an offer, I'm assuming y'all are talking about it and you're coming to some conclusion that this is the best place to make an offer at this moment. Why did you choose 290? Did you choose 290 because you looked at everything else on the market? And the other properties that were selling at 297 all had new carpet, new paint, and new windows, which is like $20,000 worth of upgrades. So you thought that though we're going to have to put $20,000 in this house, we didn't want to be unreasonable in on our offering, but we thought 290 was good because 290 plus us putting 20,000 is really 310, which is the other ones were selling around 297, so we think that's a really good offer. Like that would be a good explanation to the listing agent. That would be a good uh, 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 explanation. Kirk says here, most recent sold comps per square foot. Yes, there you go. How did you come up to 290? Oh, you came up to 290 by taking all of the sales in the last six months and you did an average per square foot price sold in that community. And the average per square foot price is $175 per foot. Your asking price is $200 per square foot. So we are actually offering you $180 a square foot, which is significantly higher than the average sale property that is sold. Your explanation should be one, an explanation that the listing agent should have already told their seller. That's the key. Think about this. Your explanation of why you're offering what you're offering should resemble the exact information the listing agent should be telling their seller, either to get a price reduction or 
in this negotiation. So think about it this way. Like, think of like, okay, we're making this offer of 285 on this property that's listed at 300. Or maybe you're making an offer today at 270. It's listed at 300. And in your mind, you really believe 270, 275, whatever that number is that you really believe it's worth. That's what you believe. Why do you think it's that? It's, it, why do you believe that? And how would you communicate that to the seller if you were getting ready to list that property? If the, if the seller said to you, hey, I want you to list my property at 300,000, but you believe it was worth 275, what information would you tell that seller? I'm telling you right now, I promise you, if you will think like a listing agent for a moment, think about what you would tell the seller if they asked you to list the property at their asking price, their current price, what would you tell them? What would you present to them? What data, what justifications would you share with them to get them to price it correctly? Whatever that answer is, that's exactly what position you should be taking when you're presenting your offer. You present that offer at 270, you present that information to the listing agent. Now, here's the key. Remember, I started off with saying these listing agents are frustrated. They're worried and they're scared. They don't want to say anything to their seller because they're afraid to be, sell uh, be fired. So guess what? They'll be glad to say that you said it. Because then they're just the messenger. They're just the messenger. They're not the one saying it. They could sit there and say, well, you know what? They offered 270. I know we're asking 300. And, you know, as we talked in the beginning, I really think that, you know, that we can get your price, but the, the market is softened a little bit. But, you know, I, I want to tell you that here, I just want to share an email that they sent me because they kind of, you know, just so I can show you, you know, what they're saying. And then, boom, they, and then they share that information. So what we just did is we just su successfully presented what needs to present it, be presented to the seller, knowing that the listing agent is too afraid to present that to the seller. The listing agent will love you. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't have to say this. I can say that they said this. It doesn't matter who said it. It just needs to be said. There's so many deals not going, not being ratified right now because what needs to be said is not being said. So we can sit here and we can point fingers at the listing agent and say, I don't think the listing agent presented all the information. I don't think that they're, you know, I think the listing agent's not being honest. I think the, the seller's in control. I think the seller's got a leash on the listing agent and the listing agents, they're, they're afraid. You know, we could sit here and say that for another six months to a year and suffer. And we're the only ones suffering by, by complaining like that. What we have to do is say, well, why is the listing agent not getting their seller to compromise more? Because they're attached to the listing, just like you were attached to the buyer's uh, relationship is why it freaked you out when you cut a counter offer from highest and best, when you made an offer of $1,000 over full price and you had to present a counter of $20,000 over full price after the highest and best offers came back. And then you were freaked out because you didn't want the buyer to think that you were disloyal, that you were not working for them. You didn't want them to think you were greedy when you had to tell them that you, um, the, 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 the appraisal gap and the waiving of the, uh, the, the inspection. Remember how you felt in the beginning of that market? You were conflicted. You didn't want to say it. And then over time, it, you warmed up to it and it became normal. We're at that exact stage right now that what these listing agents need to tell sellers will be normal, but we're six months to a year away from that. So what we have to do is we have to say it, let them be the messenger. Now it's been communicated and you'll see your counter offers will come back stronger. You got to make this a process. Every time I make an offer, 
I have to think like I'm a listing agent. What do I need to tell my seller? You then make that your position when you present it to the other agent. Put it in an email. Send that to them. Talk to them about it, the other agent. Influence them. They're likely to actually, and, and the way that you get them to say it, it's like, hey, I, I know the offer is not full price and my, my, my buyer really wants the property. They really do like the property. They want to make a deal. Of course, you know, they're looking at the market with one, if through one set of lenses. I'm sure our sellers look at it through a different set of lenses. But it, 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 to, to make sure that the seller doesn't think that the buyer is just trying to look for a deal or steal their property, we, we just kind of wanted to share what kind of information we were looking at that, that uh, in the beginning when we formulated this offer. So they just don't think that we just picked a number. We wanted to kind of share with them what we see in the market as to why this might be a reasonable offer. You kind of, do you mind sharing that with the, with, with the seller? You just, that's, that's what you say right there. The whole reason you're doing this is to make sure that the seller doesn't think that the buyer's just trying to like lowball them. They want to see that there's, there's actually a method. This is not the love letter. Oh, we love the home and my, you know, we could see our children being raised here. This is not a love letter process. This is a process of explaining the market to the listing agent or explaining the market to the seller through the listing agent because the listing agent's not going to do it because they're afraid to lose the listing. So when do you do this? On every offer. Do not try to predict when you should do this and when you shouldn't do this. I'm telling you, you won't be able to predict it because you're, the only thing you can base your prediction on is what is your offering price and what is their list price. You have no idea the personality the attachment, the emotions of the other agent or the seller. You have no idea. So it's unpredictable. You are only, if you start trying to figure out, I'll do it on this one, won't do it on this one. I'll only do it when I'm 15,000 below or 30,000 below versus $5,000 below. You'll be making a mistake. You'll be making a mistake because you cannot predict the way that the listing agent communicated to them the day they tried to get that listing paperwork signed. There's still listing agents out there that said, oh, we're going to get you full price or over full price. That's a tactic to get a listing. So you don't know what conversation they had. So you just have to say, my process, every offer, I'm going to, ex uh, going to explain our position, knowing that the other agent will likely share that with the seller. The, the other agent doesn't have to look bad. They'll be glad that you share that with them, by the way. They'll be happy. A good real estate agent will love it because if you did that to me, I promise you, and we don't put a deal together, I'm, get, I'm gonna use your information. I'm gonna get a price reduction. I wish every buyer's agent would do this to me. We'd make a lot more sales and I'd get a ton of price reductions if y'all did this to us. See, you cannot control what that seller does but you can influence. Use your influence in this manner to do more deals, to do more deals. All right, everybody, it's 801. That's the information for this morning. You all have a wonderful day. Let me know if I can do anything for you. Of course, I'm here to support you. Bye, everybody.